and about the Bible and the state book and the, sky, and the flowers and the animals and all of that stuff that we're talking about right now. But to me, the real issue is that we've become a nation with an identity crisis. We don't know who we are anymore. We have become so accommodating without discretion that we have lost our core, our creed, and we violate everything we used to stand for. You know, when President Roosevelt stood up on December 7th and talked about December 7th, he talked about the righteous might of the United States of America. That righteous might that he spoke of on that day, colleagues, had to do with the fact that he understood that we had a benefactor that allowed us to beat the superpower of the world at that particular time with a few con strips, a canoe that had a, a cannon strapped on it, and basically we were not supposed to win and be a nation, but we became a nation because of that righteous might, because there was someone greater than we are. We call ourselves a superpower right now, and we are a superpower in the world. But we've got all of this stuff to fight with, but we've forgotten what we fight for. We've forgotten what we stand for. We've forgotten who we are. We go to other nations, they have absolutely no problem. They are not sensitive to the fact that their religion is their religion, and they don't really care what our beliefs and our thoughts and what we think about the way they run their country. We've opened up the doors to everything, and that's fine. We have the greatest document ever written by mankind, the American Constitution. But it is a document that was written by men who were tempered by a greater document than themselves, or than the Constitution, and that's the Word of God. It's not even about whether or not we make the Bible the state book. It's about the fact that when we look at our grandchildren and our children right now, men and women of this chamber, we better start thinking about something. If we want to pass on to them the great blessings and the tremendous opportunities that we've had as Americans ourselves growing up in this great nation, it scares me to think, and it frightens me to think what this nation is going to be 10, 15, 20 years from now if we don't start standing up for something right now. We sit down on the seat of do nothing, lean back on the elbows of do less, and say, wake me up when it's all over. Americans have better wake up. We have come to a position in this nation where everything that our forefathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, everything that they fought for is in question. We're taking crosses off the graves of men who gave their last measure of devotion for this nation. We're taking the crosses off of their graves. We're speaking against them and speaking against okay. everything that they died for, as though it means absolutely nothing. This is greater than the Bible becoming the state book of, of Tennessee. Our enemy said over 50 years ago, that they would take this nation without firing a shot. They said they were going to divide us from within. They were going to make us destroy ourselves. And the way to do that is to make us forget who we are, what we are, whose we are, and what we fight for and stand for. Good gracious of life. Why don't you stand for something? Stand for something and stop falling for everything. <laughs> Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It, we are at 1045. We had rolled that over. Um,